In this final section of the presentation, we will identify and some key lessons learned from Korea and present policy implications for enhancing transparency in the public construction sector. What are the, some of the key success factors of Seoul's clean construction system? In Seoul's experience, the clean construction system has been successfully introduced and utilized in its public construction work due to five main factors. First, political will and support from the top leadership to build and enforce this system for transparency and efficiency has been absolutely critical to CCS's successful implementation. Why? Because systems such as the CCS affect real people and their everyday business practices. And because resistance inevitably comes from people who are used to benefit from the old practices. For this reason, determination of Seoul's decision makers has been critical in terms of how Seoul and their project partners have pushed and then adapted to the changes in the work environment that came with the introduction of the new system. Second, reducing the actual workload of the people ensure the successful utilization of the system. Right from the beginning of the system introduction, the Seoul government recognized that the digital reports submitted through the 1PMIS must be recognized as official reports. As a result, this enabled the elimination of paper-based reports on the part of the project contractors and all other relevant stakeholders. It also reduced the workload by allowing the systematic and integrated reporting and information sharing. This was key to Seoul's success. Let's remember, aside from the initial efforts needed for the system adoption and learning, a new system should make life easier for everybody, not harder for the users. Three, human resource arrangements that placed technical experts in charge of specific projects facilitated bottom-up approaches and continuous upgrading of the system in Seoul. Seoul Metropolitan Infrastructure Headquarters within the Seoul government is staffed with specialists in relevant fields such as engineering, water, and electricity. These individuals are not contractors but rather regular employees with the official government status. For every public infrastructure project, whether small or large, the Seoul government assigns specific officials in charge of each project. These officials then must conduct regular visits to their project sites with the overall personal and professional responsibility and accountability for the project's implementation, safety, and problem solving. As such, Seoul is able to institutionalize a bottom-up feedback loop whereby these responsible officials bring back the comments and requests from the construction sites on 1PMIS and reflect them directly in their policy and institutional responses. This system has enhanced the ownership and management accountability within Seoul. Four, appointment of dedicated staff and cross-sectoral team arrangement for operation of the 1PMIS and Alimi within the Seoul government have ensured holistic solution finding and accountable management of the system's introduction and upgrading. <laughs> system does not operate itself. Rather, it is operated and maintained by real people working in real offices. And without specific responsibilities assigned, let's admit, it's quite challenging to ensure effective management of any system. When introducing the CCS, the Seoul government therefore created a cross-sectoral team in the construction management department, which brings together data managers, construction engineering experts, policy specialists, as well as secondees from the system maintenance company in one single division. Through this setup of bringing everybody within one house, the Seoul government has been able to institutionalize a cooperative work working modality and ensure a holistic problem-solving approach by forcing people to talk to each other and work together, basically. This ensured the successful development and improvement of the 1PMIS and Alimi in a sustainable manner. 
five, ongoing reforms in Seoul's public administration system to bring about the changes of attitudes and mindset among public officials has created an enabling environment for policy and system enforcement. Why? <laughs> Transparent information management does not take place in a vacuum. Without a conducive mindset, no policies or promotional campaigns can bring about policy successes automatically. At the national level, all government employees in Korea, therefore, must participate in an information disclosure mindset training program at least once a year. At the city governance level, the Seoul mayor created a dedicated information disclosure department in charge of Seoul's public information service and introduced a policy to disclose and share all information on the city's policies with the public. As a result, the Seoul government now discloses just discloses every piece of its policy information, aside from those legally prohibited, which enables 10 million citizens of Seoul to access the real-time information through our the dedicated website. Now, some key lessons learned. First, ongoing system upgrades are just as important as initial development of CCS. And there has to be a multi-year budget allocated for this purpose. We are sharing these lessons learned with you because this might be helpful to you when you are planning how to introduce a CCS-like in initiatives in your own country. Now, let's start with this question. How many of you watching this webinar have changed your cell phones in the past two years? Quite a few. Even our phones need to be upgraded every two years or so. Clean construction system is no exception to such upgrading needs. There is no such a thing as a perfect system. And no matter how much preparation goes into the setup, upgrades and improvements to the system must be made. Recognizing this, the Seoul government has therefore allocated human and financial resources for annual system optimization and upgrading since its initial establishment of the system in 2011. As you can see in the table on the screen, the Seoul government has invested approximately 800,000 US dollars for the initial system development in 2011 and 2012, and then spent about 200,000 US dollars on average for the annual system upgrading between 2013 and 2016. <laughs> you may think that this is a substantial amount of financial resources. It is a significant amount. But when we do some calculations, we can see how this is well worth the inv investment. Now let's go back to the table. So it involved a one-time investment about 800,000 US dollars to develop the 1PMIS and of approximately $200,000 per year for the system maintenance and upgrades. This has contributed to the digitalization of reporting and enhanced efficiency in managing more than 80% of Seoul's public infrastructure projects in less than five years. Now, as the Seoul Infrastructure Headquarters has an annual budget of 1.3 billion US dollars, the financial returns on this investment are exceptionally high. Just a few percentage points of reductions in investment costs resulting from this system implies savings of dozens of dollars for each dollar invested. And this is complemented by solid gains in public trust vis-a-vis -vis government, making 1PMIS and Alimi a truly impressive policy choice. What's also noteworthy is that the system improvements have been made using the feedback and requests from the actual users of the clean construction system. This kind of uh, feedback-based uh, system upgrading has ensured that the system remains relevant to the shifting environment and address the new needs and demands of the users and the public. The second lesson learned. Online information sharing must be complemented by offline venues of information sharing and consultation with citizens. While online public information sharing with Alimi is extremely important and useful, Seoul government has also learned that it cannot replace the need for face-to-face -face information sharing and consultation processes altogether. 
In undertaking construction projects, the Seoul government therefore holds information and consultation sessions for residents around the construction sites on the proposal. As per the feedback from the residents, so then amends the project plans. By listening to the residents' voices and reflecting them right from the project design stage before the actual commencements of the project implementation, so government can minimize the public discontent or any additional design changes that may be forced upon later on in the project. When agreements cannot be reached after multiple consultations, a project may be cancelled altogether. In Seoul's view, this approach of project amendment and cancellation as per the public consultation can save social conflict and money in the longer term. Number three, targeted anti-corruption policies need to be accompanied to create an enabling environment to prevent corruption. However effective the clean construction system is, increasing administrative efficiency and transparency in the public construction management cannot be achieved through a technical introduction of the system alone. Other policy and educational measures need to be introduced in conjunction with the system introduction and upgrading. From Seoul's experience, Specific policies on anti-corruption help to achieve greater transparency in public construction management as a whole. Below are the two examples of Seoul's anti-corruption policy measures that accompany the introduction of the clean construction system. First, post-employment restrictions for public officials to prevent a conflict of interest. In order to restrict the possibility of retired public officials getting jobs in private enterprises and negatively influencing their former affiliation through acts of solicitation and seeking favors, the employment of retired public officials is restricted by Korea's Public Service Ethics Act, and any violation of this law is punishable by fines or imprisonment. And the Seoul government has set up a specific committee to review the employment of its recently retired public officials to ensure strict enforcement of this policy. Second, reporting center for public construction subcontractors and subcontractor tribune. Seoul observed that large construction companies can utilize their dominant status to exploit competition among subcontractors to lower prices and undermine the rightful interests of subcontractors. Therefore, the Seoul government has opened the reporting center for construction subcontractors in 2011 to protect socially vulnerable subcontractors from various illegal and unfair activities. Since its opening, an average of 268 cases have been reported annually. Following investigation, if illegal subcontracting activities are exposed, punitive administrative measures, including correction orders and suspension of businesses, are taken as outlined by the Framework Act on the Construction Industry of Korea. On a final note, here is the summary of our presentation. First, Korea's rap rapid economic and social development was not without problems. The country has long struggled with problems of corruption, state capture, faulty constructions, and inefficiency in the public construction sector. But they managed to address them over time through various efforts. The clean construction system is one of the measures that the Seoul Metropolitan Government has successfully implemented this regard. In introducing initiatives such as CCS, providing real-time information from business processes is the key, and measures need to be developed to provide such information without increasing the workload on the part of the government officials as well as project contractors and supervisors. Key feature of 1PMIS is that the provision of a standardized, periodic, and digitalized reporting system with visual evidence which captures all the dimensions of the construction project management. The key feature of Alimi is the provision of the user-friendly and well-structured real-time information directly transmitted from the online project management system, which allows two-way interaction between the project managers and citizens. 
In order to implement CCS-like approaches, the following is recommended from our end. Mobilize the political support from the top. Create a dedicated team within the supervising government body. Allow a multi-year budget for continuous system upgrading. Seek to legislate a supporting law while implementing advocacy and training activities. And finally, introduce complementary laws and policies to prevent and punish corruption in the broader sense. Our final word is that there is no perfect solution for addressing corruption and efficiency in public construction management. But nevertheless, in Seoul's experience, it is our conviction that practical systems like the clean construction system that change the business processes and influence the actual work culture for transparency can indeed make a difference over time. This concludes the presentation that we have prepared for you today and thank you for your attention.